Hey, it's Bitty Penny. Welcome back to my channel. It's February sheet load of cards. Yay. Use those hashtags at the top of the page if you want to share what you're making with the sheet load. Um, on here, you can have the dimensions for just making one card. There's lots of ideas for alternatives. And there's also the information where you can find um, Alicia at Call Me Crafty Owl. The second sheet is all instructions, and you guys, you're definitely going to want to watch Alicia's uh, video today, giving you instructions of how to put the sheet load together, because she's going to have a whole lot of cutting tips, okay? So I am making a deconstructed sheet load this month, and I encourage you to use the hashtag in the title of my video to get see what everyone else is making. But I went ahead and used some of the same supplies that the sheet load calls for. So I have two 12 by 12 sheets of paper. I also grabbed some solid, solid colored cardstock, and this is from Hobby Lobby. I think I ended up just using three sheets of that. I'm making five by seven cards. I did bring in this printable. It's from tsunamirose.net and it's a part of her grief junk journal. And I just took the pieces that I wanted from it and made like 12 sentiments, 12 backgrounds. I resized things. That is the beauty of printables. They are so amazing. I just love printables, you guys. Now, these have cutting lines, you see. So like if you have a brother scan and cut or a Cricut, you could let the machine do all the work for you. But I actually just sit here and fussy cut them all out. And I do notice that fussy cutting these is so much easier because I kind of have a guide. I like to cut just inside of that line. So I cut everything out. So now I have all my ingredients. I have the little sentiment for the front. I have all those different um, pieces. And then I brought in my lunar paste and I am going to go around the edges of all of these cards. So I am making 12 cards. That's how many the sheet load yields. I'm making six of one design and six of another design. So I have two designs. And um, I just think that this lunar paste just really takes this um, little journaling card to the next level as ephemera. So uh, that's what the pink one looks like. And this is the difference between with the lunar paste, which is metallic and without it. I just think it makes such a big difference. Now this is deconstructed. It's a little bit mixed media. So I'm bringing in stamps and I am going to stamp my backgrounds. My backgrounds, even though I'm making two different designs of cards are gonna be the same. So all 12 of these are made the same way. So the first thing I did was I inked up one of the stamps and I had my 12 card bases there and I'm stamping directly onto my card bases. I'm using 110 pound card stock and this is a five by seven card. Okay, so I'm just gonna stamp all of those out and I do all of those at one time and then I will change out my stamp and I will go in and I will stamp the next layer, which uh, is this scripty stamp. It's no longer available. The flowers, the beautiful flowers you can find at Dreams Etc. in the blue fern section. Really amazing stamps, you guys, for $10 a stamp set. High quality photopolymer, beautiful stamps. If you like vintage and really detailed images, I would definitely recommend that you go over to Dreams Etc. and see all the awesome options that she has in stock. Okay, so then I did all 12 of the backgrounds with that and I really love that background. Okay, so I used the cutting instructions for the most part. So I did cut out the one inch strips, only one panel of them from each of my 12 by 12 sheets. Now those over there, I cut to six by one inch so when I was done, I had six by one inch and the three and a half by one inch strips. I just wanted a little variety. 
I also cut up these panels and this ephemera. Those are gonna go to the inside of my card. So let's do this. What I decided to do was come up with one formula for each of these uh, main focal points. So for this butterfly one, I kind of just arranged one. I found a design that I liked and I did that six times. So that also is very kindred to using a sheet load because you, um, Alicia does <laughs> all the hard work for us and figures out the measurements and the arrangement. And then, you know, you get a mass production style. I'm kind of doing the same thing here, but instead I'm altering the size of the card. I'm adding stamping and I do end up still using almost all of the pieces that I had cut down. So I just had a few scraps left over, which is no big deal. I make a lot of scrappy cards, so I embrace the scrap. <laughs> okay, so I figured out what I wanted to do, and I made six cards that look like this one. I am shocked. I didn't add any pearls or gems or anything to it, but you certainly could. I'm going to show you how I did the inside of these and I did pop up these little sentiments on the front with foam tape on all 12 cards. So um, the sentiments on this say, butterflies appear when angels are near on the outside. And then as you're watching me decorate, the inside said, what we once enjoyed and deeply loved, we can never lose for all that we love deeply becomes a part of us. I thought these were really nice sentiments to send to someone in a time of loss and with sympathy. Um, and I'm so happy that I'll have them just ready to go in my stash. I love just the elegance and the beauty of these papers and ephemera and everything. So, you know, if you're looking for a kit, this is not necessarily a card kit, but it does make beautiful cards and there's lots of options. I only pulled a couple of elements, but I think there might be 40 pages of paper and elements in the kit. So that's it. That is that card. Now, I grabbed a cup of coffee and I started on my second card. Of course, the backgrounds are the same. And now I'm just taking these one inch strips and I'm just popping them at the top. It's funny, this card is a little different than the other five that I make that are just like it. I just moved some of the pieces over a little bit because of this next element that I'm adding. So I'm grabbing a little miniature cutting pad and my X-Acto knife or whatever. And um, I'm going to cut just a slit right there in the fold of the car card so I can add ribbon. So I have some organza ribbon uh, in my stash. You can get organza ribbon anywhere. And um so I am just going to run this through that slit of the card and around the front of my card before I put my focal point on. And this is why the rest of the cards kind of took on um, a slightly different, they have the same design, but just slightly different paper placement um, because I was tying the ribbons. So I do think it's good to kind of get your position of your ribbon and even maybe get it tied before you glue anything down. So here I'm just making sure it's straight and taut. You don't want it too tight, but just, you know, not loose either. And then I'm just gluing this directly down. That's obviously gonna hold the ribbon in place, no problem at all. And then I'll just tie a little bow off to the side and I just thought it was such a fun embellishment, something I haven't done in a long time, but it just takes those elegant cards to the next level. I feel like when you add fabric by adding, you know, twine or ribbon. So on the inside, these all kind of came out the same, even though they had the ribbon. I used the same formula that I used on the first six cards. 
and put my sentiment over on the flower side and the strips of paper on the other. So here are my 12 cards. I really love them. I love the way they came out. And I really enjoyed interpreting the sheet load a little different this month by the deconstructed method. Um, and yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely go see what the rest of the team has made. I can't wait to watch. Go get your sheet load from Call Me Crafty. All, all the links are down below in my description box. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye.